Alright, good morning everybody. I am extremely excited and nervous and all that stuff, so this should be fun. Um, I was able to get my lighting and I have my camera hooked up. I am now using my computer for the podcast part of everything. So before I even start any of that, I want to kind of update everyone. So I was supposed to have a video with, what element did we just do? Fire. <laughs> I was supposed to have a, um, I was supposed to have a video up with the fire element, but, but I wasn't quite able to um, get the footage and all that edited, plus the quality was just off. So I didn't really want to like, that to be my first video. I know that sounds a little perfectionist, but hey, here we are. Um, <laughs> so, um, updates. This is going to be the first video up on my YouTube channel. So if you are completely brand new, which you probably are, please subscribe, hit the bell, like, comment, leave any questions that you want. Um, I will also leave all of my uh, social media information in the description. So then you can follow me on all of the platforms and all of that fun stuff. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get into all, all of it. Just let's get into all of it. All right. So good morning, everybody. And welcome to the Honeycomb Home. I am Brinsley Skye. I've been a practicing witch for over half a decade now. And, um, wow, it's actually longer than that, but whoo. Man. So quick updates, quick updates. Um, now that I have my whole setup for the video portion of all of this, this will be the first video on my YouTube channel. Um, I will link all of that um, in my socials and all that fun stuff, you know, the usual. Um, but today we're going to be talking about the air element. Uh, this was a wild one, just mainly because a lot of people don't really practice with the air element. There are certain cultures that actually do primarily use the air element in their, um, like indigenous, uh, practices that use the air element a lot more than, uh, practicing witches or Wiccan or other pagan religions. It's not something that you necessarily hear all the time. You hear um, grounding with earth element. You hear, you know, using candles in your spell work and bringing in the fire element. But, and I, you don't really hear um, a lot of people use the air element. So my biggest thing with this, uh, this portion of the element series was to really try and use different ways of connecting with the air element um that may be a little bit uh new and new and fresh which is really surprising because the air element is all about that so uh yeah so let's get into the, the podcast all right so the air element is the symbolization of communication the air element symbolizes communication, life, the Holy Spirit, um, and, and a lot of that, that inner, that inner breath, right? So with communication, let me just pull up this. So the air element is breath. It is the pulse that gives everything life. So without life, it would be complete silence. Without that pulse, without that motion out into the world, you would not have life. You wouldn't be able to. Um, it's it's honestly, this is one of the elements where it's more all about the feeling than uh, necessarily a physical practice. So if you look outside, and you probably have noticed, if there is, if it's very windy that day, you know, you feel almost like a lot of like chaotic energy coming from it. Not chaotic, but you feel a lot of energy coming from the wind and from the trees moving and all of that. You see all this motion and it 
it brings, it stirs something up inside of you, you know? And you will also notice that if there's a storm approaching or anything that may seem anxious or anything like that, it's a sort of sense of calm and it, it almost feels eerie a little bit. And with those things, it almost makes you like take a step back and kind of hiccup. So um, the error element is all about those ups and downs. It's so unbelievably uh, ever changing. It is something that when you are trying to connect with can be either extremely easy or it can be extremely difficult to kind of feel that energy and feel that connection with it. Uh, so uh, you'll hear me talk a lot about breathing and really doing that inner connection. So that's the main target with all of this, with this, with this whole element, in, in my opinion. Um, it's feeling that air coming in. And releasing it out it's it's really focusing on that breath and feeling that motion through your body and connecting with that part of your life because without that connection with your body you really have that separation you almost forget what you forget that life that's in you and when you forget that you take things for granted um, your communication isn't clear with other people uh, it can get all muddled and it's just not, it's not a good time, you know? So, so communication, um, communication with the air element is key. It is the way of existence and air is the messenger. So think about springtime when all of your favorite plants and flowers start pollinating and without that wind to carry all that pollen and all the seeds and all of that, you know, with birds and they, they pick up the seeds and or they pick up fruit and then they drop it. You know, you drop the seeds along the way. All of those things are representing the air element. And it's about travel, communication, um, life, all of that. And, you know, so a color, it's kind of interesting because there's a couple of different colors that are like that can represent air. It really depends on what your uses are. Um, but mainly, mainly the color is yellow. And when you think of yellow, you think bright and happy and life and energy and, and sunshine and all of these things. And those are all of the things that represent the air element. So because, bringing it back a little bit, because the air element represents communication, uh, it, you really need to think about how to connect with yourself. How do you communicate? How do you want to be communicated with? Um, and when you look at those things, really, I keep going back, but every single element is going to have those parts in your birth chart. And the reason why I bring this up is because the way I started out in this whole thing, which I'll, I will definitely be making a whole separate video about my journey personally, but the way I started was looking at my birth chart, uh, birth chart, I started with me, you know, so all of these things, I don't know my birth chart by, by heart, by memory, you know, but when you, when you look at your birth chart, there are all these different planets represent different things in your life and the way that you kind of go about handling them. So the, the, there is Jupiter, but I didn't really want to touch on that because I kind of wanted to focus on Mercury and Venus. Those are the two big planets that come to my to come come to my mind when I think about communication or even about the air element. Um, Mercury symbolizes communication. Mercury in your chart will tell you how you communicate with others, how you react and respond to other people, as well as how you want to be re uh, communicated with. Venus shows you how you show love to other people. So if you, for me, for example, I, Leo is, I, Venus is ruled by Leo in my chart. And it's a very powerful, uh, powerful thing, you know? So like knowing these things about you can really help see how you communicate with others, but it can also show you how you can tweak things and change little tiny aspects of yourself 
so that you can communicate clearer if that's a if that's a part of your life that you are that's, you might be struggling in so it can with mercury and when you start trying to get into speaking clearly and trying to get your message across to other people um mercury can really help you figure out how to go about doing that this is why during mercury and retrograde people feel like they can't speak properly there is a so much miscommunication and they kind of sit there and if something were to happen normally they might react completely different they might actually stand up for themselves but during mercury and retrograde they can actually have a harder time doing this and that's because of it being off just a tinge you know it's it's just the universe it goes through these phases and you really want to know how you are going to react to those things um i don't know if anyone's familiar with the app called the pattern but the pattern actually takes your birth chart it takes the time that you were born and where you were born and it looks at your birth chart and it kind of tells you how your body is going to react to the different world changes that are happening so that's a really good resource to have if that's something that um you may not necessarily know everything about uh so the zodiac signs that are most prominent in the air element are aquarius gemini and libra so when we think of these uh zodiac signs it's a lot of ups and downs you know a lot of ups and downs and I'll tell you right now I have a lot of air in my birth chart so it takes a lot <laughs> it takes a lot but these you know these signs tend to be very passionate but they also tend to be uh, almost roller coaster like they can have these really high moments and but then you know maybe the next day they're extremely low and it's think about how air is think about how the wind changes all these things are ever changing and so quickly too so with these with these signs like that's that's why a lot of these signs are the way that they are and that's not a bad thing sometimes knowing what can be your weakness or knowing what can be a, a disadvantage for you can actually help you kind of heal yourself or react to things differently that's how I always look at it if that's why I I love constructive criticism because it helps me figure out okay well yeah that kind of hurt like I don't like hearing that but it's something that would be good for me to know and that's kind of the same thing with learning about your birth chart and learning how these things are affected because when you look at your mercury or you look at your venus these things really can help you especially if you're having problems with your relationships with other people um it can really help figure out what you may be missing a little bit you know let's think about how we can connect with their element um so with our daily lives a good way of connecting is just going outside I feel like with all of these elements, there is a sense of going outside. Um, with the earth element, sitting on the ground. With the fire element, sunbathing. With the air element, going out on a nice windy day, feeling the breeze. Or even if it's not windy, going outside and really just paying attention to your inner breath. Taking those deep breaths and counting and making sure that you feel your lungs fill up and then letting all of that go. All of those things the motion is is what the air element is all about when we think about the start of our spiritual journey what is one of the first things that people have heard I know the first thing I kept hearing was oh have you tried meditation have you tried meditating oh meditation really has helped me you know and the reason why this is constantly brought up is that going back to the way that air is life and air can bring life into things when you think about meditation it's all about that controlled breath it's all about that inhaling all of that energy right all of the new energy and then exhaling all that gross sludge that's been lingering in that stale air that's just been in your body you know so 
there are certainly many different meditations that can help you um it can help you guide you through um releasing a lot of that toxic energy within yourself but really do take the time to feel your lungs expand and exhaling all of that it's it's very 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 important that during all of this we don't lose sight of the basics which is why i like starting from the very beginning so from my previous episodes um for anybody that is watching me uh on youtube right now i do have all of my previous podcast episodes still on my spotify they just don't have attached videos to them so you can always go over there at the honeycomb home either on spotify it's it's found everywhere that um podcasts are available that is done by the visualization but it's used hand in hand with the air element so these are just ways that you can kind of connect with it a little bit um and it's it's something that I feel like is very important just because with all of these elements you know I feel like I keep saying everything's important you know and it's not that you have to include every single thing but if you start feeling like start where where things feel the most tough, you know, if you are having a hard time feeling that new life or feeling that energy, start with your breath, start with breathing in, start with just being in an environment where you can feel like you can have that sense of control over your own life and your own ability and your life and your, and your magical power that's within you. Uh, but how do we how do we connect the air element with our personal practice? Well, it all is connected. It's all it all works hand in hand, you know. So one of the biggest things that we hear people use is incense. Incense are a fantastic way of using the air element in your spell work in your practice. And you don't have to just use the stick incense if that's all that's available to you go for it. That is perfectly okay. But the way that it connects you to this, to this element is essentially it's releasing the smoke, right? Which goes hand in hand with the fire element, but it releases the smoke and it fills your whole area. It fills the entire room and that whole air is now charged by that energy that you have the intent, like whatever intention that you put into it, it charges that whole room with that, with that energy. Um, so a good way of also doing this, if you do have a cauldron, um, or a way of burning things safely, uh, you can do this outside too. It doesn't necessarily just have to be inside, but if you have a cauldron or something like that, you can make your own incense. And a way of doing this is using different types of herbs and putting them in your cauldron, charging them with whatever intention that you want them to have, and then lighting them on fire, you know? Light them on fire and the smoke will release whatever intention and all that energy. And that's a way that you can connect to something personally where also you are also bringing in and connecting with the air element. Some good uh, herbs to use with the air element are bergamot, anise, lavender, sage, lemongrass, peppermint, and then lemon. Uh, so any citrus fruit is actually pretty good to use with the air element if you're just trying to bring something in. Uh, going back to the different colors that are also represented, um, if you notice, a lot of these are very, very strong smelling materials and they, they're fresh smelling. So going back, air is life. That fresh smell and that fresh kind of ingredient is what it's all about. It's what it's all about. But going back to the different colors and um, that can represent the air element, you know, we talked about yellow. But it really depends on how you are trying to bring it into your spell work, too. Um, 
when we use colors in our magic you know color magic is 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 so fun i think after the elements i think i'm going to talk about color magic because people may not necessarily connect with the oh i want to throw herbs in a cauldron or i want to collect herbs they may be more art driven and that is still a good way to use your spells and you can definitely make artwork and that be your spells so i will definitely be going over um color magic probably after the element series but other colors that can be associated with the air element are light blues uh and like a, like gray think about light blue. blues and a light blue sky with some nice little breeze going by and if you think about like dark grays or grays it's storm clouds so it really just depends on how you would want to bring this energy into your practice uh, which is it really depends because if you want that big booming energy you might want to bring in uh, a gray candle with some smoky incense and like the bergamot or something like that to kind of charge it that way all of these oh. herbs promote communication intuition and inspiration when i was st first started learning about the elements um the things that kept coming up for me was it was very much the intellect element it was the element that you tapped into to help inspire you it was the creativity element because it is without good wit let's see how am i gonna put this knowledge is key right knowledge is power but the only way that we receive good knowledge is if the communication is on point <laughs> the only way that you can receive good knowledge is if the communication is clear and the only way that you can receive inspiration is if there was a messenger to inspire you. So all of these things, it goes back full circle and they're all connected to each other. So another way of connecting with the air element is really just getting inspired, you know, reading a book, reading something that you weren't, uh, you, you never thought that you would read before. All of these things can really, really help connect you to that higher power and don't think that you have to do everything because I I'm, I think I'll probably say this in every single video and every single podcast but witchcraft is not about having the most fancy materials and about having all the different gadgets and everything I didn't just I I just recently got my first cauldron I never had one in my entire practice never even touched one crystal wise I just this past year is the first time I ever purchased any crystals uh it's just something that didn't connect with me if that's something that connects with you go for it but with the with the combination of financial things and also you know practicality uh, it just never worked for me. So now that I'm really starting to sneak through and dive into different parts of my craft, um, I'm starting to gather more materials that may help me with that. Um, but it's not necessary. It really isn't. Uh, using your own self, you are a magical being and you are a powerful being. And that's why the air element for me is something that I fully enjoyed learning about because it it shows you that as simple as blowing air out of yourself it can be so powerful and so rewarding and healing so definitely if you want to connect with this element start with knowledge start with communication start with your birth chart start with breathing start with three breaths a morning you know just it's 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 these simple things that will help you progress in your practice. Well, I hope that you holy cow, that's it's moving, there's an earthquake. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed that episode. I do apologize that I'm a little loopy. I've never been in front of a camera. Looking at myself is kind of weird, I'm not gonna lie. Um, oh my gosh, editing this is gonna be even weirder. Oh no. So it's 
it's a learning experience for me and you're on you're 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 here for the ride <laughs> you're here for the ride but i am i am so glad that you were able to uh i hope that you got some information out of this i hope that it helped you out a little tiny bit um i know that my approach to this kind of stuff is a little bit different than probably a lot of the other people that you've either watched or listened to but I really do try to make everything that I say come from a place where I am being extremely genuine and just what I have pre like what I've what I have learned. Um, I am still learning so, so much and I haven't had the the I haven't had the amount of experience that or communication with other witches to really uh, feel that validation. I really hope that through this these podcasts and through these videos that I do reach some of the newer witches and or new moms that may have been feeling like they aren't able to start their practice back up because they they just had didn't have one secure before having their child um I know that's how I was I didn't have like I I still did these bigger rituals and things but they took a lot a lot of planning they took months of planning and because I didn't have the materials it did take a long amount of time to get these things um just right so I really do hope that all of these videos and all of these uh podcast episodes do help people that may have shorter period like shorter lengths of time to actually work with because all these little tiny tips can really really help just bring yourself back to center and really enforce the idea of your inner power. <laughs> well, I hope that you all enjoy your day and I hope that this was very, very helpful. If you have any, any questions, please either comment, you can message me on Instagram. I will definitely respond to you if you have any questions that you want to have for me personally and that you want to discuss during a podcast episode, you can always ask them to me uh, through Instagram and I can actually insert a little section where I answer your questions. All right. I hope that you enjoy your day.